I am not short on words, so please bear with the length of this speech. In the rest of this speech, I will use history and science in a Hegelian sense to prove that Mr. Samuel Hanks' shell games are honestly despised by everyone, but the uncouth yutzes of one sort or another, Samuel wants to prevent us from explaining a few facets of this confusing world around us. If he manages to do that, he'll have plenty of time to focus on his core mission, egging on negative externalities in the form of evasion, collusion, and corruption. I despise everything about Samuel. I despise Samuel's attempts to ruin people's lives. I despise how he insists that he's a man of morality, achievements, and noble qualities, one who often sacrifices his own reputation or safety in order to pursue that which is right and those things which truly matter. Most of all, I despise his complete obliviousness to the fact that he will do everything in his power to bring widespread death and degradation to millions of human beings across the face of the earth. No wonder corruption is endemic in our society. Samuel loves getting up in front of people and telling them that he is a man of peace. He then boasts about how he'll jawbone aimlessly by the end of the decade. It's all part of the media spectacle that is Samuel Hanks. Of course, he soaks it up and swallows in it like a pig in mud. Speaking of pigs in mud, we must protect the interests of the general public against the greed and unreason of the apolostic, corrupt know-it-alls, if we are to ever keep our priorities in check. Yes, this is a bold, audacious, even unprecedented undertaking. Yes, it lacks any realistic guarantee of success, like all great plans. However, it is an undertaking that we must unquestionably pursue. Because if natural selection indeed works by removing the weakest and the most genetically unfit members of a society, then Samuel is clearly going to be the first to go. Samuel's ultima, ultimata, whatever that word is, are becoming increasingly incorrigible. They have already begun to desecrate personal religious objects. Now, fast forward a few years in time, in which they have enabled Samuel to sentence more and more people to poverty, prison, and early death. And if you don't want such a time, then help me disseminate as widely as possible all the information we have regarding Samuel's intransigent calumnies. Help me give parents the means to protect their children. To understand why that affects everyone who has ever lived, you need to realize that it is ridiculous that I have to be faced with mythomaniacs whose domineering biases are constantly treated with apathy. More than that, more than that, before he once again claims that mediocrity and normalcy are ideal virtues, he should do some real research rather than simply play a game of bias reinforcement with his lapdogs. I, not being one of the many daft knuckleheads of this world, hail as a benefactor every writer or speaker, every person on the platform or in book, magazine, or newspaper with merciless severity strives to get people to sign a petition to limit Samuel's ability to cause trouble and get into wacky hijinks. And that's one reason why I'm giving this speech today. I know a very few feather brain underachievers personally, but I know them well enough to surmise that one of Samuel's most loyal subordinates is known to have remarked, Samuel's blessing is the equivalent of a papal imprimatur. And there you have it, a direct quote from a primary source. The significance of that quote is that I have observed that those who disagree with me on the next point tend to be unsophisticated and those who recognize the validity of the point to be more educated. The point is that Samuel is thoroughly pecksniffian, as he has proved to my complete satisfaction. Samuel focuses on feelings rather than facts like a Sure, he attempts to twist and distort facts to justify his feelings, but that just goes to show that Samuel is careless with data. Makes all sorts of casual interpretations of things without any real justification. Has a way of combining, combining dis, disparate ideas that don't seem to hang together. See, and he seems to show a sort of pride in his own biases. And he gets in all sorts of vile speculations. And then he makes no... 
effort to test his speculations. Just the short list. Though I am not really a proponent of conflict, Samuel doesn't care about freedom, as he can neither eat it nor put it in a bank. It's just a word to him. And as we don our battle fatigues, let's at least be clear about what we're fighting for. Our war is not about reducing the deficit. Our war is not about ending welfare for the rich. It is not about the largesse or the responsibility of private philanthropy. All we want is for his, habit his habituaries not to mortgage away our future. My future. Our future. One of the things that I find quite interesting is listening to other people's takes on things. For instance, I recently overheard some folks remark that his attendants accept his mentally deficient position without question. Regular readers of my letters probably take that for granted, but if I am to upbraid him for being so illiberal, I must explain to the population at large that we can all have daydreams about the happy, fuzzy, purple bunny land where everyone is caring, loving, and nice. Not only will those daydreams not come true, but he has never been able to assimilate and accept the humane ideals, civilized aims, and social aspirations of his peers. What's my problem, then? Allow me to present it in the form of a question. Isn't he the Lahoregic suborner of perjury who recently wanted to use scapegoating as a foil to draw anger away from more accurate targets? Huh? What's my pro... What? Why? While that question may not be profound as what is the meaning of life or is there a god if samuel can't stand the heat he should get out of the kitchen many of the things i've talked about in this speech are obvious we all know they're true it's still necessary for us to say them because we see the same kind of phenomena less obvious perhaps but distinctly perceptible in almost all areas of activity in which samuel hanks chooses to participate Thank you for your time.